welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? It's Friday, it's Friday, it is Friday. I look forward to Fridays, many people do, but perhaps our reasons for looking forward to Friday are not all the same. I look forward to Friday because soon I'm going to be traveling to a local church and preach the gospel, talk about the ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. I'll be in places where sometimes people do listen to the radio and some places where our radio program is not on, but I get to be in a pulpit and preach the word of God. That is the thrill of my heart and my life. Well, welcome to the program today. My Bible is sitting open to Romans chapter 1. If you can, reach over, pull up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. If you don't have your Bible, but you got that electronic gadget of yours, plunk it into Romans chapter 1. We'll begin reading at verse 21 here in just a moment. I have a desire to put into your hands a sample packet which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. Please let me do that. Now, I want to give you this sample packet because gospel tracts are evangelism some tools. They're a method by which we can extend our gospel witness to people who do not know Christ as Savior farther and farther. And gospel tracts will clarify in your heart and my heart, make it more succinct in our ability to tell the gospel. So please, before the program gets done, my announcer will tell you three ways by which you can contact us and give us your name and mailing address. I'm going to highlight a gospel tract here in just a moment, but I need to get us prepared for our Bible study time here in Romans 1. Let me begin this way. Now, if you have access to a computer and you go to visit our website there, you can replay a lot of our past broadcast. But if you were to listen to the broadcast from Monday, you would hear me telling a story. It's a story about a king named King Truth. He's a wonderful king, and his rule makes the kingdom very peaceful and successful. But in the story, there's a rebellion. It's led by a man we called Mr. Foolish. He and others dethrone King Truth and imprison the king. Soon, this peaceful, successful kingdom becomes full of garbage and wickedness and darkness. And my story was written based upon the things found here in Romans chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. Now, it's not hard for us to see who King Truth is. King Truth is God. But who in the world is this Mr. Foolish? Well, friend, you are and I am. We are Mr. Foolish. All of humanity is Mr. Foolish. We have rebelled against our Creator, and our foolish hearts were darkened. Yesterday's broadcast began by us using and looking at some steps in the mindset of believers using words beginning with the letter R. So I want you to come back to verses 21 to 23, and let's see the next steps that humanity has taken into their foolish, dark thinking. Get your Bible, get something with it, you can jot some notes. Well, a gospel tract, I have one in my hand right now. A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The one in my hand right now is geared for people who are or have been in the military. It's entitled, We Are Grateful. We are grateful, and it identifies the fact that people can be very, very grateful for the military service, but sometimes people who have served in the military, and particularly those who have been in combat, can think that since they put their life on the line for their country, that somehow that merits a little up 
tick in their standing with God and will merit their way into heaven. This gospel tract says thank you to veterans, but it lays out the fact that there's only one way to heaven, and it's not through military service. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have veterans in your family, if you've had people serving in the military right now in your family, in your local church, in your neighborhood, whatever, here's a great tool to share the gospel with them. We are grateful. It's just one of the tracks in the sample packet that I want to send to you. Be ready when my announcer gives the contact information or go to our website, which is Bible Tracks, Inc., Dot O-R-G. With your Bible open there, Romans chapter 1, beginning at verse 21, here's what the Bible says. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be, be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and to creeping things. Please stop right there. As I said, I began using some words beginning with the letter R, like in the word rejoice, to walk through and unpack these three verses. Keep the flow of thought in mind here, would you please? In verses 18 to 20, we see the willful suppression of truth. And now, in these verses, 21 to 23, we are discovering the wicked steps into a foolish thinking. We suppress truth, but we're thinking now becomes foolish. Now, yesterday, my first R word was the word refuse, based upon the first half of verse 21. Sinful people refuse to act on the truth that's clearly seen and known to them based upon verses 18 to 20. My second R word was the word reasoned from the second half of verse 21. Verse 21 says that we became vain in our imaginations. That word imaginations here does not refer to having a creative ability. It simply refers to our thinking skills. Our thinking skills became vain. They became useless, worthless. The farther humanity gets away from Adam and Eve, the progressive generations of people reveal a spiral downward into worse and worse thinking. All right, today I've got two more R words. Let me give both of them right now. One is regarded, the other one is reduced. Regarded and reduced. Word number three is regarded based upon verse 22. Sinful humanity, a humanity that has cast off God who created it and the God with whom we've got to deal with and give an account to, this humanity has regarded itself as smart. Verse 22 says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. It is from this verse I get the name for Mr. Foolish in the story I told back on Monday's broadcast. Actually, the word fool or foolish ends up being used twice here in the passage, once in verse 21 and here in verse 22. But each of those words translated fool or foolish translates a different Greek word. The word foolish, used of a foolish heart in verse 21, is a word that means and refers to a person who does not have any understanding. It describes a person who cannot put things together. It's a person you do not want to be a criminal detective. They can't follow the clues. In verse 22, the word fool is there. This word comes from the Greek word moros, from which we get our word moron, This kind of person is a simpleton. This person cannot put things together in an explanation or reasoned thought pattern which makes sense. When you listen to this person explain things, you can't follow their logic. Mr. Foolish thinks that he can run the world's kingdom better than King Truth can. Mr. Foolish thinks his ways are better than God's ways. He thinks his thoughts are more intelligent than God's thoughts. Mr. Foolish ends up calling good evil and evil good. Sound familiar? Let me come to my fourth word beginning with the letter R. My fourth word is the word reduce and it's based upon verse 23. Listen, listen to verse 23. 
talking about these people who have cast off God. It says, and they have changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. That word creeping things there means things that crawl on their belly. When this verse says that man changed God, it obviously does not mean that mankind has the power, has the ability, the authority to alter who God is and what he's like. All that means is that in our stinking thinking, we have altered what we think God should be. We've altered who God is in our thinking. In the minds of the world's people, we have reduced the glory and the uniqueness of the Creator God. You see, we want a God that we can understand. We want a God that we can control. We want a God that we can manipulate. So we reduce God. We reduce him to be like us. We reduce him to the place where we can, well, we can identify him and and assign him character traits like animals and birds and creeping things. Oh, friend, every culture in every era worships something. One of the things that clearly displays that we are made with the image of God is that we have burned into our lives, burned into our soul, this need to worship. Now, whether it's the true and living God or we worshiping ourselves or some invented thing called God, people are by nature worshipers. The God who created our world is powerful enough to judge those who refuse to worship him as God, refuse to submit to him. Now, you and I cannot control this God. The only options we then have is to, one, either humble ourselves before him, before his truth, or to elevate ourselves and invent our own truth and invent our own God. And more often than not, the God that we invent is ourselves. God's truth, the the true and living God that we cannot alter, we cannot change, we cannot corrupt, God's truth involves how our world came into being. God said he spoke it into being in six days. That same truth involves whether we are male or female. There's no other option. It involves the family unit that's made up of one man and one woman. God's truth also includes the one and only method of people being made right, being made pleasing before the Creator God. That one and only method is through Jesus Christ. The Creator God came to earth took on flesh and dwelt among us. The sinless one came because of his love for us. He made a way of escape out of our condemnation before him, out of our guiltiness before him. He came, took on flesh and dwelt among us. He died on a cruel cross. While there, he took the burden of our sinfulness debt on himself. He paid for it. He was buried and rose again the third day, all so that you and I, through him, and only through him, can be saved from our sin. Receive him today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.